What's up everybody, Davey here with the Fragrance Bros here again with another video from my basic series and today we're answering and asking the question, what's the difference between an eau de cologne, an eau de toilette, and an eau de parfum? So this is a really great question that I do get asked on occasion, especially with people that are just getting started. So let's get straight to it. Now the simplest answer to this question is that each of these categories is a concentration of a fragrance. Fragrances are made with perfume oils that are diluted in alcohol and water. And depending upon the concentration of oils used dep depends on what type of uh, concentration that is called. An eau de cologne, for instance, is not as concentrated as an eau de toilette, which is also not as concentrated as an eau de parfum. Now, oftentimes, if you look for the answer for this online, what you'll find is a chart or a, uh, a diagram of sorts that has the, the, the terms with the various concentrations on there numerically. Take that with a grain of salt though, because a lot of these concentrations have nothing to do with numeric percentages. A lot of these are just kind of just loose guidelines. Sometimes I've even seen fragrances that are extreme versions or eau de parfum versions of the original, and the difference in concentration is only 1%. Now let me get into more specifics here. Now the term eau de cologne actually comes from Cologne, Germany, when an Italian perfume maker created what was essentially the eau de cologne. He wanted to make a fragrance that reminded him of his Italian home because he just moved to Cologne, Germany and he was getting homesick. So he created eau de cologne, which was a citrusy, aromatic fragrance, and it was a fairly light concentration. Modern day eau de colognes are not as generally popular as eau de toilettes or eau de parfums. Now you will find them out there, but I usually warn people against buying eau de colognes because they're not as strong as eau de toilettes typically. You may have a one, two, three hours max out of an eau de cologne. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but you just have to know going in. You do find kind of modern twists on the eau de cologne, which is like this. This is Atelier Cologne. Atelier Cologne has a whole line that is in the vein of the traditional eau de cologne, which is citrusy and aromatic, but they have modern spins on it and their concentrations are higher. Now, in my previous video, I mentioned that a lot of people in the UK call traditional men's fragrances aftershaves, and there's a good reason for that. In 1900, Gillette invented the safety razor, and with that, he adopted eau de colognes as something to use on your skin after you shave, hence the term aftershave. Today though, a lot of the aftershaves that you get in the drugstore or at the supermarket are diluted even more. So it's, they're usually less concentrated than eau de colognes. There are some exceptions like with this. This is one by Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements called Enya. And it's actually about as concentrated as an eau de toilette. You also have concentrations that are even less than that like body sprays, which is one reason why I always advise against using body sprays, because their concentration of oil is really, really light, even less than eau de cologne. Next, of course, you have the eau de toilette. The eau de toilette really encompasses about 80 to 90% of the fragrances out there. It's really the main concentration that you see, especially in men's fragrances, but you will see this in women's fragrances some as well. Here's one from Hermes called Voyage d'Hermes, which I love. I have a review of this if you wanna go watch that. It's an excellent fragrance, but I bring this up because this is an eau de toilette. The eau de toilette actually has a very interesting history. When you look at the term eau de toilette, a lot of people say eau de toilette and they say it looks like toilet. But a lot of times, of course, with translations from one language to another, we often lose the subtleties from the original language. The term doesn't actually mean toilet as in something you go to the bathroom in. The term actually is derived from a cloth called a toile. The toile was a scented cloth and they imbued heavy fragrances into this cloth over a long period of time. And because sanitation and bathing wasn't as popular then as it is now, what people would do was they would wake up and they would take the toile and they would rub it on their bodies and essentially kind of erase the scent of sleep from the previous night. Now from toile, we get the word toilette, which is a room in which someone would go to freshen up, much like just a modern day bathroom. That in turn led to eau de toilette, which means water of the toilette. So we essentially do the same thing. We use the water of the toilette to freshen ourselves up. And eau de toilettes usually last between six to eight hours, depending on what type of ingredients you're using. But you're gonna look at usually about eight hours with a, a good eau de toilette. Next, you have the eau de parfum. Now, eau de parfums are really regarded in the niche world as kind of the standard for the concentration for perfumes. And as I've mentioned in my previous video, 
The term eau de parfum comes from perfume, and the term perfume comes from the Latin words that mean through smoke. You'll find a lot of women's fragrances are eau de parfum concentrations, which is one reason why they cost a little bit more. Now, your mileage may vary, of course, with your application and with your skin, but typically they'll last eight to 10, maybe 12 hours is common for a lot of these eau de parfums. Now, here's an eau de parfum from a niche house called Byredo, and it, this one is called Mojave Ghost. Have a review of this as well, fantastic fragrance. Now, there are other concentrations outside of just eau de cologne, eau de toilette, and eau de parfum. Some of them are actually in between those as well, but there's at least one more concentration that is more potent than eau de parfum, and that's extrait de parfum. You'll hear other terms like extrait or perfume extract, pure parfum, pure perfume, various things like that, but it's just a really, really intense version of a perfume. Here's one by a house called Slumber House, and this is Sova, one of my favorite fragrances of all time. These last a ridiculous amount of time, at least 12 hours, sometimes up to 24 hours. They're very thick, very dense, and they're great for really cold weather. But you also have to be really careful about extraits because they're just super powerful. So in summary, these terms are used for concentrations of how powerful the fragrance is. Body sprays are gonna be the least powerful and you're not gonna get much out of your money with that. Colognes and aftershaves are next. They're oftentimes citrusy and they last for a couple of hours. Eau de toilettes are what you're gonna see most of the time and they're the main concentration that you'll see, especially for men. And they typically last six to eight hours depending on their ingredients. Eau de parfums are gonna be even stronger. They're gonna last 10 hours, 12 hours sometimes. They're mostly found in women's fragrances but are also found in niche fragrances in indie houses as well. And extra de parfum are gonna be the most powerful and potent of your fragrances. They're also not as popular out there so you're probably not gonna find them very often. Now, of course, I'd like to thank Fragrance X for sponsoring this video. Go down to Fragrance X if you're looking for any type of fragrance. They're an online reseller with thousands of legitimate fragrances for a discounted price, and I'll have a link and a coupon down below for that. I've bought from them before, so I trust them and I can recommend them to you. That's all I have for the basic series today. What do you wear? Do you wear an eau de cologne, an eau de toilette, or an eau de parfum? Or are you one of those people that wear extraits? Let me know down in the comments down below, of course. And if you haven't already, please like and comment and subscribe on your way out. I'll love you for it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm David with the Fragrance Bros. Bye. Thanks everyone for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to check out my other channel, Beast May Reviews, where me and a friend review high quality products for men. You might like it. Go check it out.